we're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's August 2nd here in Seoul, I'm Shin Yeun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Niall Song. Good morning. Good morning. And Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. If you have the chance to stop by one of the main attractions in downtown Seoul, Seoul, Gwanghamun Square next week, you can enjoy its summer festival. For the first time in four years, an outdoor festival featuring DJs and artists will be held there. All performances are free of charge, and officials have decided to arrange stages around the area so that it looks like a mega nightclub. And let's stay on the topic of how to spend the summer. Recently, a Washington Post columnist shared her experience of going from a heated sauna or hot tub to a cold room at a Korean-style spa in Texas. She mentioned how, like most parts of the world, the states is seeing record temperatures this summer. To fight this off, she found going to Korean-style spas where they have cold rooms did the trick. And moving on, meanwhile, there are some people who might not be able to enjoy the luxury of going to these summer festivals or luxurious spas. As a matter of fact, Seoul Metro found that the number of seniors aged 65 and up who've been riding the train in July jumped by more than 750,000 compared to the same period a year ago. Experts say this is mainly because they were trying to get away from the heat. Because subway fares are free for senior residents and trains provide air conditioning, they have become a popular destination. And it's not just seniors, though, that are suffering from blistering heat waves in the country at the moment. Those living alone, or the homeless and those who've had their homes devastated by the torrential rain from a few weeks back, are the most vulnerable and demand our attention. And here in the studio, Walter, why, do you think, why don't you tell us about more of these social minorities and what they're going through in these troubling and very blistering heated times? Yeah, I'd like to focus more on the homeless side of things because obviously if that wasn't bad enough, they have to now struggle with the, the heat wave that we're right. enduring at the moment. And not just that, usually right after a heat wave, there's either the torrential rain or mm. before the heat wave even as well. So you really do have to feel for them because it's an uncomfortable position for even people like us who are lucky to sit in air conditioned rooms. Uh, you know, they have to deal with the heat exhaustion during the summer. And then sadly, some people, yeah, lost their homes during the torrential rain season as well when it was flooded. Um, a lot of the homeless people, they carry their lives on their back, so it could only be more strenuous going through this very bad weather. And same when it gets very cold as well here in Korea. I guess like in most parts of the world, the government doesn't really accommodate to the homeless mm -hmm. uh, by giving necessities such as water and food and shelter during these very hard times of weather. Uh, but it's something I, I think the Korean government should look more into. We definitely need more efforts done in this area. Now, in order for us to see that, what should be done then? You know, obviously we need to address this global warming issue on a global scale. Mm -hmm. We can't do a lot individually, but if we join forces and everybody is in this together, then I think we could eventually overcome it. But we do need to provide reasonable temperatures for everyone to get through this together. And actually in Seattle, when the weather hit a uh, record high in 2021, Amazon offered a part of their company building as a cooling center for people to come in. And it was just a really hot summer and people really depended on that. Mm -hmm. And you can't obviously demand, demand that to private, pe private companies or regular people. But I do think that if we work together as a society with the government that's so important both of us being in that together yeah. that can actually help us get through this that's a very good idea if corporations work mm. with officials and provide these that's a very innovative idea yeah. and that could help a lot of people and also as you mentioned we're seeing global warming but recently as the un chief said it's global boiling at this point it is so we need more efforts right now there's no more time to delay and that was our news feed for this wednesday let's now move on to today's discussion topic south korea has been producing most of netflix's 10 most watched non-English language series, including hits like Squid Game and The Glory. Seoul has become a main player in the OTT game. And to find out more about this, take a look at the screen. Back in June, the Korean government vowed to boost its already flourishing OTT industry. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism said it would solidify Korea's reputation as a cultural powerhouse. 
mainly by allocating 35.7 million US dollars to productions making films and dramas for streaming services. Also another 23.4 million for post-production work. That's because homegrown content has been leading Korea's economy. It has become a major part of the country's exports, taking up more than what home appliances and displays have been bringing in. Recently, we've seen even more content ranking high on global charts. It's no longer a surprise to hear Korean content dominate streaming platforms and global top 10 must-watch lists. And now here at the studio, why don't you walk us through just how amazing our homegrown content has been doing on OTT platforms this year. Yeah, um, ever since the 2021 hit of Squid Game, Korean contents have been doing really well. They've been on a roll and one of the biggest OTT, a little name we know by Netflix, <laughs> um, Korea has actually gone world number one nine times first half of this year. Mm -hmm. That's nine times being number one. Just to clarify, uh, Netflix selects, as we mentioned in the VCR, the top 10 most viewed non-English content and Korea has been doing really well on that chart, whether they are number one or just really being in the top tens. Yeah, that's still very remarkable. Mm. Even though they're not number one all the time, they always they're always there. There's always seem to be one there. Walter, why don't you add on to this question? Well, if we have actually have a look at the screen, like we have a lot of content coming up, and it, you know some of the great content that has come up is like Kill Book Soon, mm. uh, Queen Maker, Black mm. Knight, King the Land, mm. Unlocked. Uh, a lot of these have been very yeah. very successful. Uh, by any chance, have you seen any of them? I think I've seen most of them on the list. What about you now? Ah, I've seen The Glory. Uh, recently, I started The King of the Land, but I haven't really gotten around to doing more. I mean, there's so many new contents that's coming up, and they're all so equally popular mm. that I can't keep up. I know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and I know that, like you mentioned, ever since 2021, I mean, mm. like with the big release of Squid Game, there's just constantly new content coming out. I mean, we saw three shows being produced uh, coming out in 2021. It then grew to seven in 2022. Mm -hmm. And now we have nine so far this year and we're not even at the end of the year yet. I know, so wow. we're doing really well. We're only at the half of this year. And as you just saw on the screen, those hits, a lot of people have seen it, including myself. I mm -hmm. loved Unlocked. Mm -hmm. There's a drama series, uh, the movie series called Unlocked mm -hmm. there, and it's a really good catch. You should definitely check it out if you have time. Now, I would like to move on to our second part. What do you guys think is the biggest competitive advantage Korean content has here over other countries? Mm -hmm. I mean, Netflix's CEO also had something to say about the distinctive kick in our content. Mm -hmm. Back in June, he met with South Korea's Prime Minister Han dok -soo to discuss cooperation between Seoul and Washington's video streaming markets. And before I ask you two the same question, take a listen to what he had to say on Korea's potential and performance so far. And Korea's vibrant creative ecosystem serves as a shining example of how stories can transcend cultures and language. Uh, nowhere uh, has this proven more than here in Korea. Um, we at Netflix are immensely proud to be part of this remarkable journey. So as the co-CEO said, nowhere has proven more than here in Korea. Mm. And do you guys agree to this statement? Do you guys think that Korean content does stand out compared to those made in other parts of the world? It definitely does stand out, in my opinion, because we have a very a unique sense of humor as well as great ways to make stories. I think we're very creative as a country. Mm. But um, it's great to hear his content and he's uh, backing on K content. Uh, but. I think like the Korean language is actually really difficult to translate because it's so yeah. specific. Yeah. So I remember back when Parasite came out, there was a lot of debate whether you know some things could translate into English mm. because of the culture that was intertwined within the movie. Yeah. However, it's great to see that Korean culture is being introduced more through dramas and movies, and therefore we're not just, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the people of Korea who are the North or the South. Mm. We've got our own identity now, and now we're really going forward with this. Mm. Yeah, and speaking of Parasite, I remember when Bong Joon-ho, the director of the film, received the Golden Globe Awards, mm. he said that once we overcome that one-inch barrier of language, the yeah. subtitles, yeah. you'll yeah. be able to see so much amazing content. And as you mentioned, Walter, now Korea is associated with one of the best content production in the world, mm. which has allowed a lot of people to get to know more about Korean culture and the language. And what would you like to say about this now? Do you think that Korean content does have a distinctive kick compared to those produced abroad. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, up until now, we've had a lot of content coming in from the West, mm -hmm. and it has been mostly dominated by the Western 
Western content that's been going around. But in this global age, I think people have really started to look for something different, something right. that they haven't seen before. And we were mentioning how Korean culture being integrated into our contents has been kind of the kick into it. And as Walter mentioned, it could be kind of difficult to understand Korean as a language and the humor code itself yeah. because there's so much cultural aspect to it. But that's the same in every language. Mm -hmm. So once people start to get into it and understanding, learning little aspects of Korean culture, it becomes really fun. It's like going the next level, learning the language, learning the humor and learning how people diss each other. I think that's <laughs> kind of a new appeal to this content. And many Koreans living abroad, including myself, when I did live abroad, you kind of influence your friends friends who don't yeah. know anything about Korea to watch the things that you're immersed in. A lot of my uh, non-Korean friends were the first to get into K-pop because we were listening to it so much constantly. And yeah, I also think it's because a lot of talented group of people, like Walter was mentioning, a lot of creative people are in Korea and they work really hard and it's all it's a very competitive environment. For I sure. mean, everywhere, entertainment is very competitive, but they, I think that kind of works as a synergy and mm -hmm. we're creating really good content through that. We're creating really good content and the whole world can watch it all mm. thanks to OTT platforms. And we also asked why our viewers loved watching Korean content and what makes it stand out compared to content made abroad. Here's what three of them had to say. Take a look at the screen. Now, Avail Perino said to me, K-dramas are really interesting because they show Korea's unique style of TV shows. There are some where we can see Korea's reality, such as The Glory, where you saw school violence, and Crash Course in Romance, where it educated you about what's happening here in the peninsula. Jack Thompson said, what sets Korean dramas apart is all the crazy twists and turns, and it's a completely different tempo with dark humor. Also, I really enjoyed The Glory and Full House. Mm, wow, that takes you back in the early 2000s. Thousands, yeah. Dan Quentin James says, when you're an American with a Korean wife, K-dramas come naturally. That's also a great point, too. I think Nell mentioned here in the studio that she had a lot of friends abroad. Thanks to you, get mm. to you know access all this type of K-content. Now, I was also given the special opportunity to talk to a legendary producer. It was none other than one of the producers of the timeless classic U.S. sitcom Friends. I actually met him up last week and was able to ask what he thinks are the reasons behind K-Content's flourishing global popularity. Take a look at the screen to see our interview with the creator of Friends, Kevin Bray. Today we have a very special guest with us. It's one of the creators of the timeless classic, Friends. It's Kevin S. Bright. Welcome here, Mr. Bright. Thank you, Grace. Let's make some news. Let's make some news today. And I'd like to ask you the first question. So we've seen a lot of OTT platforms have Friends on. And since then, a lot of young millennials like myself and Gen Z were able to watch these series. And do you think that the rise of these OTT platforms contributed in Friends' ongoing popularity? Unquestionably, uh, uh, especially, you know, once Friends was on Netflix, uh, it was kind of like a relaunching of the show. So many more people got the opportunity to see it that may not have seen it the first time around, built a whole new fan base for us, and the show seems like it's more popular than ever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, South Korea is very well known for its own OTT content. Which one of them captivated your attention the most these days? Well, I think uh, everybody is aware of Squid Games uh, around the world, and my wife and I uh, like uh, watching Extraordinary Attorney Wu. Uh, so yes, and I think, uh, and uh, I think Last Train to Busan is my favorite zombie movie. Yeah, it's really <laughs> nice. But what do you think makes South Korean content stand out compared to content made from other parts of the world? Well, I think it's the originality. Uh, I think uh, Koreans aren't trying to copy the rest of the world and what they're doing. They're coming up with very original ideas. And uh, when you just look at Attorney Wu, you know, uh, focusing on uh, autism and uh, bringing that into the storylines, I think, is, is very bold and unique. And as a producer, would you say that the way we film our content is extraordinary? 
Well, uh, I have to say, you know, the, the, the filming is very impressive and, you know, people may think, oh, it was made in Korea, so it must have a reduced budget of some kind. And when you look at Korean content, it looks as every bit as good as anything coming out of Hollywood. Mm, all right. And my last question for you is, you know, you have created one of the best series I think we've seen. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, Friends is a timeless classic. We would love to hear your advice for all, all the producers and directors out there to make South Korean content continue to produce timeless content like Friends. Could you give us any words of advice? Well, I think you're already doing it. Stay original and unique. And I think uh, for your creators, don't be tempted to try to copy success. You can't duplicate what somebody else has created originally. Stay true to your own vision. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Bright. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> All right. Stay original and unique. That was the main takeaway that I had with my interview with Kevin Bright last week. Now, what do you guys think about his comments? I mean, honestly, I am such a huge fan that I'm going to be fangirling for a little while just now. Okay. But I, he seems like such a sweet person and everything that he said really just, you know, hits home mm. being original and not trying to copy or duplicate yeah. other people's success. And I actually went down to the studio as they were interviewing. Yeah. I was standing around in the corner and wanting an autograph. <laughs> but, you know, I think that essence that he has and that even even about the attorney Wu that he mentioned is that you want you just have to be genuine with everything you want to talk about um, just not listen to other voices that went ahead even if it is successful keeping with our culture our language and our narrative of speaking I think that is kind of the key to I mean what led us here and what will actually lead us in the future as well mm, and Walter well, yeah, obviously uh, he's right there. Like, try and stay original. Uh, we are a society that change trends all the time. So if we mm. keep doing the same old, same old, it's going to be pretty boring, I right. think. It's, it's really good to hear that he even compares us to, like, Hollywood. Obviously, exactly. everyone mm. wants to be in Hollywood. And now because of successes like Squid Games mm. and all the other movies, we're seeing now a lot of Korean actors and actresses mm -hmm. moving into Hollywood, which is, I know, some of their main goals, mm -hmm. right? To be noticed on a global scale. Right. So it's great to see that we're now also being seen on a much bigger stage. And I'm just hoping someday maybe Hollywood actors will come to Korea exactly. and be a part of projects here and it could be a collaboration between the two big stages. We will be the biggest stage, hopefully. <laughs> mm. And I hope that we'll see that soon because with AI technology also advancing, we're seeing virtual studios come to place. So that'd be mm. easier, even though you're not physically in Seoul or physically in Hollywood per se, we could see more collaboration happen mm -hmm. forth. And despite OTT platforms giving the extra buffer for content to flourish, what do you guys think are some limitations in this growing streaming industry service, starting with you? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I think money has to do with it because yeah. mm. uh, you, TV is still free, but it's not watched as much. And it's a different generation now and many people are moving now to these OTT platform services. Um, I think it will get highly competitive because we're already seeing streaming service like over 10 to 20 streaming services now around the world. And I mean, those prices, they're not gonna get higher because mm -hmm. people are gonna want to, you know, not pay for 10 streaming services. Mm -hmm. They have to pay like $200 a month just to try and keep up with the latest. I'm paying uh, for like three right now and I'm like, please no more. And yeah. they keep moving shows yeah. into right. different platforms. Exactly, and I'm only paying for two myself. And to be honest with you, that that's enough. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, luckily you can still share some streaming platforms. I'm not mm -hmm. promoting that, but I still do. <laughs> but, well, we uh, might not be able to soon with Netflix trying to regulate Yeah, that. don't do that, Netflix, yeah. please. Um, anyway, yeah. I also like f find myself not watching a lot of like streaming services anyway these days. Mm -hmm. could be just because I've gotten to, you know how we used to channel surf? Yeah. Now I do streaming scrolling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah show, show or movie scrolling just to look to see what's on. Um, though there's a lot of content available, it doesn't mean I want to watch it all. So mm, I think yeah. there are certain limitations there as well. I think the pros of having so many OTT platforms is that we're seeing an influx of content, but the downside to that, it, it does exhaust us at time yeah. to time. Mm -hmm. Because we have that pressure to, we have the fear of missing out mm. and we always want to be trendy, so we want to watch all that, but there's just too much. Right. Now, yeah. Would you like to add on to any of the limitations? Yeah, I mean, I think because like you guys were mentioning, there's so many different types of content mm. 
back when, back in our day when we were younger, uh, I, we would have DVDs, right? Yeah. And we would watch that one movie. I didn't have cable, so we would watch that one movie, and we would keep watching it. Maybe some Christmas movie that we keep mm. rewatching over and over, and you kind of grow really fond of this right. one mm. particular thing. And as much as I'm so happy with all the great new content that's coming out, I don't have enough time to emotionally attach myself to <laughs> one show because so many new things are coming up. And just to add on, this isn't just a limitation of the OTT, but just locally in Korea, there are so many different types of OTT pla so platforms true. like, you know, Watcha, TV, Coupang Play, where there's friends on mm. Coupang Play. <laughs> um, you know, it's Korean, it's run by Korean, but as we have you know, big companies like Netflix coming in and investing, I am afraid that, you know, our growth in the Korean OTT platform will be a little slower. Mm. And I'm just hoping that we can invest more to grow our national companies a little bigger. Mm, not only the content, but mm -hmm. where the content is being played, which are Korean OTT platforms. And that leads me to my last question of the day. Any expectations of where you guys think Korean OTT platforms or even content should go next? Well, that's interesting because the the younger generation these days are into the short form forms for sort of content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we see it on social media where you know Instagram, Facebook, etc., have their short form, and therefore it's meaning that a lot of people are only interested in these like bite-sized pieces of entertainment. So does that mean that the OTT now has to move in that direction where mm -hmm. they maybe will start promoting more things like uh, short films or sh even like short shorter shows? Mm -hmm. like, I know that in Australia there would be certain like two, three minute uh, like cartoons that would come on it just mm. to fill the gaps. Oh. Um, so maybe we're going to have to move more into that, but I don't want to pay a lot of money <laughs> just to get the short form things. I see. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just to add on to the whole short form thing and people being really interested, I'm just, this is not an expectation, it's a hope for the future mm. that a lot of the Korean OTTs will make a short form sitcoms mm. in Korea. All right, we'll hopefully see that and we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Niall Song. No problem. And Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generations. Generations.